Alright, time to bring out the big guns, the Xantrex. I don't know, have I done a teardown of this one? I'm not sure. Anyway, the Xantrex XFR 300 4, 300 volt, 4 amp, that's 1200 watts for those playing along at home. Uh, set it to 55 volts because, well, 55 sounds like a good number. And we've got some quiescent current and it's working. There you go. We have the magic smoke. The magic smoke has escaped. Holy crap. Quick, smoke alarm. Cover it up. Cover it up. Glove, glove, glove. Oof. Well, that ended very badly. Um, the magic smoke escaped. I don't know what the hell went wrong. I was just feeding 55 volts into it and uh, it... Woo! It's still smoking. It is still smoking. I don't know if you can see it. There's still smoke coming out. Damn. Yep, she's still wafting out. There you go. You can see it. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Love the smell of a burnt power supply in the morning. It's still smoking. It's still coming out of the vent. <laughs> this is hilarious. I was just sitting here. Didn't even have a load actually hooked up on the thing and wah 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 and I've actually got this uh, sitting right down near the inlet of my um, carbon air purifier system here and I'm, I'm still having a hard time getting the smell out of the lab Ugh. I do, I've been gone for, I just went away for half an hour, came back and still not great <coughs> Hi, well I was going to do a video, um, in fact I shot a lot of intro material for this um, RD Tech, what is it, DPS 5020 power supply module that you've uh, seen in previous videos which I'll link in uh, at the end of this video and also down below and um, the designer of these uh, modules, uh, Glenn from RD Tech who sells these on AliExpress, he's the designer and manufacturer of these and he uh, saw my video and liked it and kindly sent me um, this uh, very nice case for it which I uh, mentioned in the previous uh, video it's twenty to, uh, $24 for the uh, case including all of the uh, fan and the switch and the binding posts and everything else uh, and the wires and the whole kit and caboodle this um, board up here which a uh, fan controller board and uh, everything else and uh, kindly sent this uh, DPS 5020 power supply which is a 50 volt output 20 amp 1000 watt module in this tiny little thing but you've seen in previous video that these are very efficient like over 95 percent efficient but still even at one kilowatt uh, claimed output power then well, that's like 50 watts in that tiny little heatsink and everything else. So I was going to do a video. I built this. I got time lapse footage of building everything else. Going to do a little review of uh, this thing. And I built it up and hooked it up to my Xantrex power supply here. And wah, 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 wah. the magic smoke escaped um, as you saw all the drama at the start. So let's obviously, um, yeah, it's not going to work anymore. And um, that's probably it for the review unless I can repair it. So let's take a look at what went wrong. What I um, think happened. Um, I didn't have the camera running at the time, unfortunately, when it went uh, bang, but I didn't have a load on the thing. I was feeding it with 55 volts on the input. It um, has an input voltage range up to 60 volts, so I wasn't even at the maximum. And I just pressed the voltage uh, button here, and I started adjusting the voltage up, and I just went all the way with LBJ um, right up, and then all of a sudden it just went poof, and it went and uh, the thing started catching on fire, smoke billowed out of the thing. Um, there was literally something on fire in here. So, well, let's take a look at what went wrong. Now, just in case uh, somebody asks, some um, people might think, well, I don't have any uh, rubber feet on this thing. Metal on top of metal here. Maybe there's some sort of earthing issue and that's what uh, shorted out. No, it's not that because uh, the output of the Xantrex uh, power supply is floating, didn't have, uh, it's not uh, mains referenced uh, at all, and so it's definitely not 
something to do with that. It's something into, it must be something internal in the power supply because I like these Xantrexes are bulletproof. These are the duck's guts in the industry and I don't, and it still works. I don't think there's uh, uh, anything wrong there at all. It's still, uh, still hunky dory because you can't kill these things. Um, so yeah, and I briefly saw this voltage when I turned this up, briefly saw and I'm bang and I looked down here and this had actually dropped down to zero. So I think it had hit its uh, four amp. Uh, car I can't remember what I had the current limit uh, set to at the time, but it goes up to uh, four amps. Obviously just uh, dumped all the power because this has a uh, 1200 watt uh, capability. So this is a really high power supply. It can deliver a lot of oopsie into there if something goes wrong. All right, so let's have a look here and see if we can uh, see what's gone wrong. First thing you do, of course, we, well, use all your senses. Uh, we smelt it. We saw it. It was uh, smoking. And uh, now we're going to check visually, like, you know, none of the caps have exploded. Like, there's nothing around, like, the MOSFETs. Nothing seems to be blowing except, ta-da, look at that, under the board. Obviously, um, there's flames. That is clearly flame type, uh, you know, to produce so much uh, smoke. It might, like, and it kept on producing the smoke. It wasn't just puff of smoke, then gone. Like a component caught on fire under this thing. So let's take that off and uh, see what's on the bottom. Let's just get all the connections off there. We'll flip it out. And oh, Gonski. Wow, look at that. What was there? Are there any components on the bottom? Um, I'm going to have to check the previous video where I think I briefly showed the bottom of this thing. Uh, my first guess would be, they're, they're the two pads. That's the negative pad. That's the positive pad. I had no load connected to this thing at all. It just went poof when it went up near uh, towards full scale, 50 volts. So maybe there was a cap under there. That uh, was, would there be like a ceramic cap that caught fire? We've seen that in uh, the Ness uh, video that we uh, saw a long time ago, which I might have to link in. Oh, there's the, there's a trace under there. Um, yeah, let me have a look at the old footage. Um, see if I can get a uh, picture of what was actually there. Must have been something. Otherwise, like what's causing the short? And sure enough, yep, here's a uh, screen capture from the previous video. Luckily, I did uh, actually capture the components on the in that video. And sure enough, there are two capacitors under there. Looks like only one was fitted, though. What is it? C34 there. It's a quite large uh, ceramic cap. And that has clearly caught on fire here. Um, and it's just like, it's completely gone like it is vaporized but it actually caught on fire just like that Ness one that we uh, saw before and the problem with these uh, ceramic problem with ceramic caps is uh, when they fail they fail usually fail short so if you want the utmost in reliability from a design you might put say two of them in series uh, yes you have the capacitance but then if one of them uh, breaks down for whatever reason it's a manufacturing problem it's an over voltage stress issue whatever then it's covered uh, by the other one in series with it so it's not a problem one of them short one of them's just an open cap so you just lose Half your capacitance is not a problem, but given that we only had the one capacitor across here, um, either it was uh, a wrong rated part, i.e. it wasn't rated for 50 volts, um, you know, it was it like a 25 volt cap and it went poof, because this thing, it only failed when I turned that, I don't know exactly what voltage it got to, but I think it was getting pretty close, it was going up to like 30, 40 volts or something, and maybe like when it uh, topped out, um, something's gone wrong. So either they've got the wrong stress component in there or it's just a faulty cap. It happens, you know, they got it from the uh, one hung low company at their stand at the Shenzhen market uh, that morning. And there's going to be like a manufacturing uh, bell curve of these things. You're just going to get a certain number of defects, um, which, as I said, uh, fail short. And that's what's happened here. It just caught on fire. And because I think the default, I haven't hadn't I just powered it on factory fresh module probably by default is set to like what, what was it the, the 20 amp current limit or whatever and it just delivered all that power to the output because this thing's capable of delivering a kilowatt remember that so if you got something shorted on the output 20 amps flowing through the cap it's going to catch on fire and that's what's happened here 
So the only question there is why it failed. Um, so I, I could clean this up, have an attempt to clean it up and uh, power this puppy back on. Are there any, uh, like, are there any protection fuses anywhere around, you know, I don't know. Nothing else looks uh, smoked. So everything looks pretty intact. Um, so I think that's all it did, and it did, the power supply did its job. It delivered that maximum, like, one kilowatt, uh, output, that thousand watt output into that load. It was just dumping as much power as the capacitor was saying, gimme, give gimme, give gimme give more power. I want to catch on fire. And, uh, the power supply said, yeah, no worries, here you go. Have all the power you want. Wah, 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 wah. Magic smoke escaped. Well, there you go. There's the aftermath of that. Wow. That poor cap that used to live in there, is uh, now dead. It looks like um, the cap was soldered directly across the two pins. And that's got big thermal sinks with the pins for this thing and all the copper around there. So they would have had to dump a lot of heat into that cap, poor old cap, to actually get that on the output. So that's a bad design decision because you want those caps to be, you know, reflowed. Well, in this case, it's the only component on the bottom, is it? So I probably hand soldered, but you don't want to put it directly on those large mass components like that. It's almost as if it's an afterthought, like they just didn't uh, design it and oops, you know, we need this extra bigger cap on there. That's probably why the other one uh, wasn't fitted would be my guess, but yeah. So it could have done some damage to the cap, which then uh, caused premature failure, even if it was uh, spec'd correctly. Wow, that really is quite amazing. You can see the charring of the fiberglass in there. Ah, oh, Wow, I was just trying to uh, solder that and look what happened to the pin. The pin just like sheared off in half. It was weakened by the heat of the fire. Wow. So what value capacitor was actually here? Well, um, Glenn will have to uh, tell us that. I'm sure he'll uh, respond to tell us uh, what the issue uh, is here. But if, say, for example, you go to DigiKey and you search for uh, ceramic uh, capacitors, multi-layer ceramic capacitors above uh, 50 volts, because you don't want to use a 50 volt. This is zero to 50 volt output, so you wouldn't choose... Uh, a 50 volt rated uh, part for this particular case. So it'd have to be uh, 63 volts, 80 volts, 100 volts, um, or, you know, one of those uh, preferred values, voltage values over 50 volts. If you have a look at DigiKey, it's basically got to be something under 10 microfarads, probably one microfarad or something like that, because you're, uh, you're, the higher you get in uh, capacitance, in multi-layer ceramic capacitors at that particular uh, high voltage, which is quite an unusually high voltage for a ceramic capacitor, um, they're either like a specially manufactured, they're a special physical uh, size, or they're like in like a, a little uh, lead frame uh, stacked array, which is uh, rather interesting. I'll show you that here. So it's probably like in the case size uh, we saw, like, you know, a 1206 type uh, size package or, you know, something a bit uh, larger than that, then, well, you know, it's probably a microfarad. All right, so I've cleaned it up. I haven't added a cap on the uh, bottom because I don't have any readily available uh, high voltage caps. I could put two in series, but meh, whatever. Um, it, we it burnt through a uh, sense line coming back. You can see that the two sense lines there coming back, so it's sensing the voltage directly on the output. I've just added a uh, 200 volt uh, 22. Mic cap, much larger value than what was there before, but it doesn't matter. That'll uh, just get us up and running. Um, it could probably work fine without a cap, but we'll just add something there. So let's power it on this time. Uh, external uh, supply just to uh, limit the potential damage um, that can happen here. So let's give it a bowl. All right, so I've got a uh, 40 volt input, half amp uh, current limit, so... Let's switch that on, and it's booting. It's booting, it still works. Look at that, it's alive. <laughs> Beautiful, let's actually see if it uh, outputs a voltage. Oh, sorry, the output has to be on. Oh, no, look at that, it reset. No, no, that's one sick puppy. It's set to 10 volts at 20 amp uh, current limit. 
let's go I set. So let's turn the current limit right down there. Um, and let's turn the output on. So we've got 10 volts at, you know, one amp on the output. No, no load at all. And, uh, oh, no, nah, seven, no, nah, 7.2 volts. Nah, she's gone, ski. And it's reading an amp um, at eight watts. There's nah, nothing on the output. Nah, hang on. I think I can smell something again. Hmm, this ain't good. Oh, yeah, I mean, like, you know, it's drawing one point, you know, 1 1.9 watts quiescent um, with nothing on. And if we switch that output, uh, that output on again, whoa, yep, no, nah, it was drawing like 10 plus watts up there. No, it's one, one sick puppy. Yeah, it's actually drawing 17 watts. Yeah, so um, <laughs> that is one sick puppy. Um, I don't think I'm going to try and uh, trouble shoot that uh, without a schematic. Um, I think she's, well, we could, you know, I could try and trace it out, reverse engineer it, but I'm not going to do that right now. It's like uh, 10 30 um, at night and uh, I need to edit this video and uh, get it up and go home. So Mrs. E V blog doesn't get too upset that I work too much. Hmm. Yeah, for those who want to see what's under the heat sink, Got ourselves a uh, sill pad there. Trademark. Um, oh, there we go. Hey, is that? There you go. Um, let me get those under the uh, microscope and see if I can get a part number. And we've got ourselves uh, four N-channel MOSFETs. These are uh, Alpha Omega. I love that uh, uh, company name. Uh, terrific. These are D2810. That one's upside down, so all the electrons have fallen out. So that was... Uh, what our problem was clearly um but there are they look like they're certainly not from the same same batch are they they're uh they're quite different but yet yeah, we've got uh four of those there 80 volt uh 40 amp n channel mosfets so fairly you know fairly grunty little beasts and also under here um th that's obviously not a switching converter you can uh uh, switching controller because a it's got a designator Q which is a transistor and it's got your uh, three pins tied together here or four pins tied together over there and that's your gate down in there your classic uh, MOSFET configuration once again Alpha Omega um, AO uh, 42 uh, 64 and this is a 60 volt uh, 12 amp job in series with mind you a Polyfuse, look at that. Polly put the kettle on. So what that one's actually doing, I don't really know. Um, because it's not the switching controller. So our main switching controller is the XL7005. Uh, I believe we uh, saw that last time on the uh, modules. We've just got some input um, transistors over here. And so that's coupled with the uh, TL594, uh, the classic uh, PWM uh, controller in there and uh, then we've just got the uh, quad op amp up there and altogether it's actually quite a complex beast I'd love to see the uh, full schematic of it reverse engineering this is uh, quite possible but uh, it's quite a task so I'll leave that to uh, someone else to do I'm not sure if uh, Glenn wants to share the schematic with us but uh, yeah, like, there seems to be no other damage, though, but, uh, well, physical damage, but obviously, electrically, something else is gone ski. So there you have it. That was supposed to be a review video on the DPS uh, 5020 and the nice little uh, case it comes in and everything else. But in the end, it was a complete uh, balls up, and it's just, like, bad luck that I got a unit that possibly had a damage cap. I don't, once I... As I said before, I don't know if it's like uh, under spec or something like that, whether or not it was soldering damage, whether or not it was just unlucky that uh, th that ceramic cap uh, failed. Um, it can, you know, infant mort part component infant mortality is a thing, and uh, they often fail short and catch a light like that. Not particularly common, but it does actually happen. And sure enough, it happened to me. Uh, sometimes you get lucky. I'm off to buy a lotto ticket. Catch you next time. Thank you.